If you've missed some of the videos about the kick up challenge this month, if you watched some of them, but you want a refresher to find out how the flamingo kick up can transform your momentum practice. And now that we have talked about the kick up per se, to find out all the other steps that you now have to train and in which order, you just have to watch this video. So this month in the group, and if you're not part of the group, check out the description just below because the group is a free space that you can join, participate in, submit homework in, and get a lot of video tutorials, guides, and tips to help you progress in your handstand. We talked about the kick up. The kick up, we said, is the essential underestimated part of the handstand practice for the beginner and the improver. We distinguished a few scenarios. Scenario one, you cannot reach the wall just yet. You're a complete beginner. Scenario two, you can reach the wall. You're either a beginner, an improver, or an intermediate, and you have to work on the relevant progressions. We identified nine progressions, and we wanted to work our way towards being able to kick up against the wall in a desired position that you can systematize, that looks always the same, and not only that lands softly against the wall, but ideally even that freezes before it lands on the wall. One of the most common mistakes I see people do is skip the kick up parts, not dedicate any time to improving that when they cannot produce this freezing kick up yet on demand. And that's a big mistake because if you do not have this freezing kick up and then you know a bit more about handstands, but you try to apply this to the freestanding area, then you always are going to end up with a kick up that is either too powerful or that powerful enough. And you're gonna have to wait until the stars align to finally find your kick up. And your consistency rate, therefore, is going to stagnate. It will look like this. Sometimes, imagine that you have a die, that you're rolling, and you need to make a six to get your handstand, and anything between one and five gets you an overshot or an undershot kick up. That is not what you want. This is not a consistent handstand. This is a handstand that works sometimes. You want a handstand that works all the time. A handstand in which if you roll a two, a three, or four, or five, or a six, you have a handstand that you can hold. So you need to work on your kick up much more than you think. And the suggestion was you warm up, you include some priming drills in your warm up that will make this part easier, as well as all the other parts that you plan on working on that day. And you dedicate five to 10 minutes just on improving your kick up. Then next point, momentum. And this is where we're gonna talk about the flamingo kick up. We roughly said that for the complete beginner who cannot reach the wall just yet, if anything, we needed more momentum. And for them, therefore, starting fit together, using that initial step to launch onto their kick up would allow them to benefit from this hinging action here and propel themselves towards the wall. If that's you, we also said that you wanted to make sure to go upwards rather than forward so that it's not just your head plunging towards the wall, but more so your center of mass traveling upwards as you kicked up. If that's you, you also need to work on using your legs better, learning to swing that back leg and push on that front leg. You have no idea how poorly people who have been doing handstands for a while still do that. And in the process, they deprive themselves of a better kick up. Lastly, we also showed in the group that you wanna make your shoulders travel 
forward in the process. You do not want to leave them trailing backward this way, because if you do that, you will not reach the ball. Ensure that your stepping action makes you move forward and then upward. There is a very important motor pattern here, which I'm not discussing any further because this month and this video is about the kick up, but there's an alignment notion here of shoulder flexion, which we need to dive into as well to fully understand what needs to happen for you to get to the wall. Remember, complete beginners, I have designed this mini course that allows you to have all the drills you need to get to a point where you can land consistently against the wall which is a fantastic landmark in your handstand journey because once you can do that, you can do many other drills which are much more fun, making your practice more diverse, more enjoyable as well, such as shape shifting and finger pushing and aligning yourself with the wall. So more momentum for the complete beginner, but for the beginner and more so the improver working on landing softer against the wall because a soft landing against the wall is something that you will control better when it's time to freeze then, something that won't require you to roll a six to get to a handstand. For those people, less momentum is usually better. And for those of you who can practice both the lunging kick up and the hands on the floor kick up with equal success, we said, well, the kick up that has the least amount of momentum is probably more desirable, namely hands already on the floor. But we can continue that thread further. Remember the anatomy of a kick up. We have a back leg swinging, a front leg pushing and shoulders opening, flexing. The beginner obsolete kick up tends to over rely on the legs, tends to generate too much momentum towards the wall and usually the culprit is the back leg that swings a bit too much and the front leg that doesn't do much. To fix that we can design this kick up in which just like the flamingo we will have a leg staying off the wall, off the floor at all times, just like this. And the idea is to get to the wall without using this back leg at all. And because this back leg is being canceled, you have to find ways with the other two tools at your disposal, namely your front leg and your shoulders. And your front leg will have to push much more than it has in the past because if it doesn't, you will not get there. So again, the back leg stays in the air and I do what I have to do, either with the lunging kick up or the hands on the floor kick up, to use my front leg better and then on the wall. And you will see that this, in time, will allow you to control better your landing. Now careful, there's one caveat here. People tend to, even when they keep the leg up this way, lower the leg and swing it upwards without even realizing it. It looks like this. They start in the flamingo position and they go there. And so sure, the back foot never touched the floor, but you're still doing the swinging motion up and down or down and up rather. And so you're still using that leg, that hip flexion and extension to get to the wall. We want to block that. So give the flamingo a try and show me in the group how it looks like. Now that we have understood what to work on to make our kick up better, we have to ask ourselves, well, what else comes after that? And of course, we have to start discussing alignment and we have to start performing balance. It's finally time to enjoy our balancing skills. However, what I want to leave you with is the necessity for you to practice balance after you have understood what alignment is. Alignment is the position of your body upside down. We kick up in an alignment. And if your kick up is not good, you won't balance. But this is also true for your alignment. If your alignment isn't good, you will not balance. Regardless of how good your balancing skills are and how good your kick up was. Alignment is the next piece of the puzzle. I can have the softest frozen kick up here if my alignment falls out of control, becomes something that mechanically speaking cannot be held, I will not be able to balance regardless of how strong 
my fingers, which are the tools that you use to balance, have become. The problem is that alignment in our handstand puzzle that we have defined in the Handstand Academy is the most misunderstood part of them all. Alignment is overwhelmed by shoulds. You should do X, Y, and Z to have a good line. And the usual items we see on that list are, you should point your toes, engage your core, squeeze your glutes, elevate your scapula, push the floor away, look in, not arch, tack your shoulders, tack your pelvis. However, none of those cues is essentially true. By essentially true, I mean, it is true in some contexts and not others, and therefore it is a skewed cue. It is something that is likely to take you away from a good alignment. For instance, I can have a very good kick up into a handstand in which I squeeze my glutes and engage my core, and still not be able to hold my handstand. I can have a very good kick up into an arched handstand that looks ugly, in which there is no tension whatsoever in my glutes, in which I don't think about my gaze or my core, in which I don't elevate my shoulders, and still hold it. And I can even bend a bit the elbows here to make things worse. And no pointed toe in sight. What's that about? Do you see how big of a lie this is? So my job, when comes the time to talk and teach about alignment, is for you to discard all the preconceived ideas you have been taught and fed about alignment. And those cues are part of the problem. None of those cues per se makes or breaks a good alignment. So we have to ask ourselves, well, how should I practice with the wall, chest to the wall, and once I have landed against the wall, back to the wall, to figure out what a good alignment is, because without a good alignment, when I kick up, I won't be able to balance anything. So finding what a good alignment is the next step. Balancing is yet another step after that. You have kicked up and you have a decent alignment, now it's time to balance. How do we balance? Your line, your handstand, won't hold itself like this with no effort. Just like when you stand up right and you close your eyes and you feel what happens at the sole of your feet, you realize that your body is constantly micro-rebalancing to keep yourself upwards in this position, in what looks like stillness, but actually is a lot, a succession of mini rebalancing motions, your hands then will not be something that magically holds itself vertically, but rather something you're gonna have to fight for, mostly with your fingers. And so we have to figure out a way to train that with the wall as well. And now we also have to talk about here, because of course you can do all that with the wall, with the comfort of knowing that the wall is behind you, but when it's time to take it freestanding, we see a big gap between what you do with the wall and what you do without the wall. And sometimes, you know what, you don't even feel the fear. Sometimes you're way able to kick up without the wall, but with the wall it looks perfect. And without the wall we keep undershooting. Well, what's that about? It's about fear, whether or not you're conscious of it. You're afraid of overshooting. And one of the common misconceptions we see on that matter is, well, I'm gonna practice towards perfection so that I never overshoot. This is wrong. You need to be comfortable making mistakes in handstands. You need to feel so safe that regardless of the mistake you may make, you know that you will be safe. Only at that price will your nervous system allow you to kick up and hold the handstand. And so those are the next steps. And if I was to prioritize them, I would say that alignment is the next and fear is yet the next. And balance comes after that. And in the process, we also have to talk ideally about strength, about body silence, about body awareness, and about mobility, which is a vast program, but hopefully you have understood through those videos 
and the future and the previous ones. How detailed and nuanced this beautiful practice of handstands can be. And this is not meant to be overwhelming. This is more an invitation for you to stop throwing things against the wall in the hope that it will stick because that's not how we learn. Throwing things against the wall, not being mindful about the way we practice handstands is the same as throwing arrows at a target without looking. You won't learn to aim better this way. You have to look at what you're doing and be mindful of every single step in the process to improve the weak links and get better and better. If that makes sense to you, then the curriculum of my six-week coaching program called The Rocket is for you. The Rocket is the most detailed, comprehensive curriculum about hand balancing for the beginner and the improver that you can find online. It grows every month and covers every piece of the puzzle in the right order so that you know what to prioritize and when. The goal is to take the beginner and the improver, so people who can reach the wall but not always softly and who can sometimes, at best, freestand but not yet 15 seconds, 80% of the time, which is, remember, our freestanding freedom standard, and show them everything they need to do to get to that point where kicking up in the middle of the room is not a problem anymore. And at that stage, you become an intermediate and at that stage, you can pick the other goals you want to perform and achieve. And to do that, we talk about the kick up. We have seen a bit about that together, but there's so much more to be talked about. Which exercises do we have to do at every step of that progression ladder we spoke of? We talk about the alignment, what makes or breaks a good alignment. What happens when you have closed shoulders? How do you open your shoulders? How do we tap into this shoulder flexion open shoulder motion that we talked about just earlier. How do we practice this back to the wall? How do we practice this chest to the wall? How do we bridge the gap between our alignment with the wall and without the wall? We talk about the fingers, what they are supposed to do, how they can work and when they cannot work because your alignment is not good enough. We talk about the other corrections you can perform with your body when your fingers are not strong enough to correct just yet. We talk about the stack, where your pelvis should be in space, where your shoulders should be in space, and why. It's all about the mechanical reality of it. It's not about how my body looks like when I hold the handstand. It's about how your body looks like when you hold something, when you're getting closer to it. We talk about fear because, of course, we want to be able to get rid of that wall. And for that, we have to face the void. We have to face the eventuality of falling forward. And so we have to get better at expanding our comfort zone in such a way that being falling forward is not scary anymore. And for that, we also have to work on bailing and developing a systematic, efficient, safe way to bail out of a handstand. We talk about body silence and all the micro disruptions you don't even notice right now, which are likely to take you off balance tomorrow. And we talk about mobility and strength and every other pillars that are relevant to you to bring you to that freestanding freedom standard. It's a curriculum that you have lifetime access to. But on top of that, I want to make sure that you receive the most personalized feedback possible. And that's why I work individually with you every single week, meaning every week you go through the program of the week, you go through the lectures, you perform the drills of the homework and you send me homework. And I review that homework every single week on a specific chosen day and I send you feedback and I show you on screen in your own body what works and what doesn't and I will personalize when need be the curriculum to adapt it to your needs. Maybe you're a bit stronger than your fellow hand balancer, maybe your body needs different things, maybe your mobility is not the same as your neighbor and all this calls for slightly different drills and the rocket is the most tailor-made, personalized program out there. We work with you and that's why there's only a handful of spots per group. On top of that, you have access to a library database that allows you to pick and choose drills and include them in your training sessions, as well as recording of past classes that you can simply press play on and follow along. You have access to the secret podcast, which is a series of specific podcast episodes that are only available to the students and that allow you to keep rehearsing what you learn throughout the course to really digest everything. And you also receive 
many different bonuses, such as tracking sheets, recaps to refresh your memory on concepts we will see together, and bonus modules that cover how to walk on your hands, how to perform the crow, and how to include handstands in different dynamic movement contexts. Now the next cohort starts in January, and again, as I was saying, there's only so many spots simultaneously because I work individually with every single student. So if that's something that resonates with you, click on the link. On that note, talk to you soon.